I'm being guided to share a message for Divine Feminines that maybe are newer to the journey, or maybe you've been on the journey a while, but you're still experiencing pretty intense cycles of heartbreak and despair and suffering. And so I wanted to speak to this and shine a light for you and share some truths of this journey in hopes to illuminate some really key points that have the potential to really shift things for you if this can resonate at a deep level. So this journey is the journey to oneness, unconditional love, and unity consciousness. It is the journey from the egoic mind into your sacred heart. You are transcending separation consciousness, the dream of the ego. You're transcending duality and moving in to oneness consciousness, unity consciousness, however you want to refer to it. This is a shift in perception and a shift in resonance that energetically happens through opening to your sacred heart, the love that you are. This journey can often feel like heartbreak, but what's really happening is your spiritual awakening. You are waking up to the truth of reality, which is you are one with all that is. You are connected as love. You are love. And you're likely experiencing a lot of pain and suffering on this journey to the degree that you are seeking love outside of yourself, seeking some form of validation or approval outside of yourself, something that can show you and prove to you your worthiness or that you're good enough or that you're whole or that you're lovable. And so in your seeking outside of yourself and in your chasing external forms in the 3D world, in the externalized world outside of yourself, in order to feel whole or complete or lovable or enough or worthy, in that chasing and in that seeking, you are running from yourself. You are love itself. Yet you're seeking love outside of yourself. So the whole joke of this journey is that you are the love that you seek. Yet you continue to go out and try to seek it or seek approval or validation in some way, shape, or form outside of yourself. This is separation consciousness, saying that there's a you and that there's something outside of you that's separate from you that will give you the peace and the love and the, and the, and the support and the wholeness and the, and the worthiness and the, and, the, and the feeling of being loved. And this is the duality that you are transcending. There is nothing outside of yourself. You are being guided home to your sacred heart. And in the chasing and seeking outside of yourself, you're actually running from yourself. And the more you run from yourself, the more pain and suffering you will experience. Because your soul here is to wake up from the egoic dream, from the dream of separation and come into full realization and remembrance of your divine nature, of what you really are at your core, which is not this separate little 
egoic mind and this personal, you know, personality, the small personhood that has all of these problems and dramas and traumas and everything that you need to fix and everything that you need to figure out and all the worries and feeling separate from the love that you actually are is is really the root of the suffering you're convinced though that you're going to find your salvation in some other externalized form and so the more that you run the more your reality is going to reflect this back to you if you run from yourself you run from your true essence and your divine nature which is essentially what you're doing when you're saying I have to go find something else outside of me in order to make me feel whole, complete, and lovable, and worthy. That's essentially what you're doing. And when the more you run from yourself, the more your 3D reality will reflect back this lack of worthiness or lovability and... and, and wholeness and completeness you will be face to see your own self abandonment you will be face to see your own self betrayal in the reflected 3D world because there is no separation between you and this externalized world your inner reality creates your outer reality because you are one with all that is and so if you continue to betray your own heart and self-abandon your own, your own true essence, the people, places, and things, and circumstances in your 3D world will reflect this back to you, will reflect back the lack of, you know, support, the abandonment, the, the betrayal. Because ultimately everything is you and everyone is you because there is no separation everyone is already God you are God and everyone else is God so everything is God looking at themselves pretending to be small pretending to be this little small limited little human when ultimately you are life itself and love itself expressing in this 3D reality. And you're here to break through that illusion and fully come into remembrance of who you truly are. But this can't be done through the ego. The ego is the creator of this separate sense of self and this dualistic nature that we live in and you can't approach this process through the egoic mind you can only come into your sacred heart and what does that mean it means you're transcending duality and you're transcending the egoic mind and you're coming into your sacred heart through presence presence is your doorway Presence is the portal that leads you into the unconditional love at your core that opens you up to the aliveness of all things and the interconnectedness of all things. And the egoic mind loves to keep you trapped in the, in the game of duality and in the illusion of separation. And how does it do that? It keeps you trapped in the timeline for example, ruminating on the past or hoping for some outcome in the future, keeping you bouncing back and forth like a pendulum swinging between past and future, anything but the present. Or it'll keep you in a state of judgment of others and or yourself. Judgment is the language of the ego. And you can be judging others and looking at them as better 
than, let's say, in comparison to you in some way or lesser than in comparison to you in some way. And it doesn't matter. It's all still the ego. It's all still the ego getting you to be in a state of comparison and judgment. But what is what are you judging? You're judging a perceived other. You're judging someone that appears to be separate from you. When ultimately everyone is your brother and sister, everyone is a child of God. Everyone is one with God. There is no one that's actually separate. And so when you're judging, you're saying there's a me and then there's someone over there that I'm going to judge. You're saying there's a me and there's another. There's a subject-object relationship. And the more you live in the subject-object relationship with reality and with the world and within your relationships, the more you will be stuck in the egoic mind and stuck in cycles and patterns of suffering because you're here to transcend duality and see through the eye of your sacred heart. Your mind will not understand this. Your mind will not get this. It cannot. Your mind is not broken. Your mind is just rooted in duality. So your mind will always see separate. So you're not going to be able to try to figure this out from the mind. And you're not going to be able to say, okay, I'm going to try to work my way into oneness so I can go have X, Y, and Z come into my life, whatever that may be. Whatever you're hanging outside of yourself as a little carrot, dangling that little carrot outside of yourself that you think you need. All of those little things outside of yourself that you think you need, if you try to attempt this to do to go get something that your ego thinks it needs because it you're operating still from a separate needy self you're just going to continue looping in the egoic cycles of suffering the more you attempt to try to solve this through the ego and achieve things outside of yourself or acquire things outside of yourself or do things in order to get things outside of yourself the more you will suffer and cycle cycle through patterns the paradox is that when you don't need anything anymore and you don't need it because you are no longer associating your sense of self with the separate sense of self that's not how you're perceiving yourself anymore there's a, a shift in perception and there's a shift in resonance on how you operate in the world you feel full and alive and whole and complete and grateful for every little drop of life because it's all just such a miracle it's all just this mysterious miracle just happening before your eyes that cannot be explained and you're just grateful for it all and present for it all there is no need and there is no lack and then all of the things that you thought you needed that you originally longed for make its way into your experience when you no longer need them your neediness pushes them away because your neediness is saying that you're separate from them if you want to attract things into your life you have to go where you're already one with it that's not in the mind that's in your heart your sacred heart and so the, oftentimes this journey feels like heartbreak. Your heart is being broken open. But what's really happening is your egoic mind thrives on these core wounds of abandonment and betrayal and, and things like that. Victimhood. The story, the narratives. The ego thrives on all of that. And so it becomes a vicious cycle. The joke of this whole journey is that you are the love that you seek. It's like the cat chasing its own tail. And what happens on this journey is eventually you get so tired 
of the chasing. You get so tired of the seeking and the chasing and the longing and the needing that at a certain point you have no choice but to surrender. To surrender to the divine will, trust in the divine, trust in all the signs and synchronicities that are popping into your experience. The synchronicities are the language of oneness. The divine is consistently showing you that you are connected to all things. So ultimately, in truth, there is nothing to do because you're already one with everything. You are already one with all that is. You already are the God essence, the God S. You already are divine. You already, you can't be more in union with yourself. You already are union. You already are one with all that is. So in truth, there is nothing to do. There is nothing to do. There is only to be. If there was any tangible advice, it would be to recognize when the ego is at play, keeping you trapped in the past or the future or the narrative or the story or the victim blame game or the judgment and bring your focus back to your heart and come into the present moment and recognize how sneaky the ego is at keeping you trapped in the timeline of past or future because presence is your portal the present moment is your portal and the present moment you you move into a place of grace and flow and peace and ease and you don't Need you're not a you're not in that overthinking mind anymore, and you're not worrying, and you're not you're you're fulfilled from within by coming into union with who you truly are. And as within, so without. What does that mean? It means your world is a reflection. Your world is a mirror. And as you come into union with yourself and your own heart and the truth of your divine nature, that you are the unconditional love that you seek and that you are connected to all things. And when you refuse to look through the eyes of the ego anymore and see this world as separate and see this world as something outside of yourself and continue with intention to move into your heart space and with presence move in to what your heart already knows and feels to be true. Your mind cannot know this. Your mind cannot see this. Your mind cannot understand this or feel this. Your heart knows it. Your heart feels it. And when you move into that with conviction and you're willing to drop all the stories, all the narratives, all of the egoic games that you used to play, and you're willing to see through that illusion and almost laugh at it and be like, oh my God, how much of a trap that is. I've been stuck in it for so long and it's been so easy. It's been so in front of my face this whole time that it's just a shift into my heart that allows me to feel the truth and see through the eyes of my own heart. And in an instant, the suffering and the pain can fade away and you can be in a place of peace and tranquility and well-being. As you move into unity consciousness, there's a natural love and compassion for all that is, for all expressions of life, for even the people that you don't agree with or you, you your perceptions and your preferences aren't aligned with because you see through the ego's facade you see through the illusion that at our core we are all here dancing in duality sparks of love and light dancing in duality if this is resonating Seek first the love inside yourself. Seek first your own divine nature. Seek first union with your own heart. Seek first union with you. Come into union with you 
Make your heart your focus. There's a quote I heard on a movie, or a phrase I heard on a movie recently. Um, in love to become one. What are they referring to? In love to become one. In love, in unity, in connection with all that is, in oneness, the love that connects all of us together to become one, meaning you and them, me and other, right? Two, duality become one we are one in love to become one if you would like support on your journey and you're ready to fully claim your divine sovereignty as a divinely worthy woman i invite you to check out embody the empress which is my divine feminine monthly immersion you can check out all the details in the caption below this video and until next time i hope this finds you well namaste